Mocha family, I am back with another intermittent fasting video and I'm really always excited to share this with people because it's changed my life so much. I feel so much better. I look so much better. I have an intermittent fasting playlist if you're interested in following what my journey has been like. I've been doing this for several years now, consistently. And the times when I veered off, I can see the difference right away in how I'm feeling. So it really has become a lifestyle for me. So up until recently, I was following a 16-8 window, meaning that I fasted for 16 hours and I had eight hours to get all of my meals in. And for me, that was two meals. So I practiced eating two meals a day. And so until recently, I've, I've been saying that I'm not sure if this is the right window or if I have the window placed in the right place because you can, you can choose an eight hour block of time anywhere in the day to make this work for you. So a lot of people following 16, eight, they put their eight hour window between 12 and 8 p.m. and that's the easiest for them. I, however, have a digestive system that needs time <laughs> to break down the food. I find that the older I've gotten, this has been the case for me. And so if I eat at 8 p.m., I really don't sleep well. Matter of fact, if I eat past five o'clock, I really don't sleep well because it's just not giving my body enough time. And so I always try to position my window so that it was much earlier than that. And I was also, you know, I really couldn't give up <laughs> the idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And, you know, I really wanted to eat breakfast. Uh, and so I put my window, I, my first meal would be at 10 or 1030 in the morning. And then my last meal would be at three or 3.30 in the afternoon. And what that ended up doing for me is that it ended up making me feel really hungry by the time it was time for me to go to bed. And really in the hours between four and bedtime, I would always be tempted to eat something. And you know, and that's outside of my eating window. And so, it became kind of burdensome for me. And since I'm using this as a lifestyle, this is a lifestyle for me, I didn't want to put myself in a situation where I felt like I'm always deprived. You know, I can't eat when I want to eat. That's not what I'm going for. And so it really wasn't until, you know, I, I don't even know why I watched this video because, I mean, I've been doing it for so long, I really wasn't searching for information anymore. But for some reason, I fell across Fledge Fitness's channel. And if you are the kind of person that's really into scientific proof, you want to know what the studies have been done, you want to know, you know, what the benefits and the, the possible negatives are for intermittent fasting, this guy really tailors his channel toward, a, a, he has a very practical and um, pragmatic approach to talking about intermittent fasting. And so I've re I really enjoyed his videos. And you know, he brought to my attention that the 16-8 window is really just the bare minimum that you can do to reap the benefits of intermittent fasting. And he talked about how if you really wanna reap the benefits, you should really be fasting for at least 20 hours. And so when I, at first when I heard that, I was like, what? You know, cause you know, my thing is, you know, I don't wanna feel like I'm binding myself up in any way. And so I thought that's even longer to go without eating. I'm struggling with the 16, eight, the way I have it, this isn't gonna work for me at all. And then I realized that what I was doing during the 16, eight situation is I was eating in a four hour window anyway. I was fitting my two meals in a four hour window anyway. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, 
it would be hard to force myself to eat. And so even though I had until three o'clock to eat, I wouldn't eat. Or, you know, if I ate something really big for breakfast or I would eat a little earlier than that and then I wouldn't eat again, I wouldn't be able to eat again at the three o'clock um, cutoff. And so, you know, but my window was in the wrong place. That's why I was getting so hungry toward the end of the day. And so I want to reap the full benefits. I don't want to be in the bare minimum area. And so I said, he said the window that he eats in is he eats at two and his last meal is at four. OK, is that right? No, he eats at two and his last meal is at six. OK, I think he, I think he even said two thirty to six thirty. That's what his window is. And so I thought to myself, that really might work for me. Because when I wake up in the morning, I'm really not that hungry. I really, I mean, I can eat. I mean, if I eat, it stimulates the digestive systems and I'm, I can eat, I'm good. I'm not saying I'm stuffed, but if I don't eat, I'm fine. I usually don't really feel hungry until naturally, until about noon. That's when I start first thinking, oh, I could eat something. And then, you know, it's not that hard for me to wait another hour, hour and a half to two hours from that first light urge to eat. So I wondered to myself if doing that would be easier than trying to struggle through the late afternoon and evening of feeling really hungry because my eating window ended too early. And so, I put it to the test, you guys, and I can't even tell you how much easier it has been. <laughs> it's all about finding where your window should be, at least for me, to succeed with this lifestyle. And so I still eat two meals a day. Uh, I eat my first meal at 2 o'clock. And it's really not that hard uh, from 12 to 2 to wait to eat because I'm so busy. That's like the busiest time of my day when I'm grading, when I'm prepping the classes I have to teach, when I'm helping my kids with homeschool. And so it's easy to get my mind off of the fact that I want to eat. And then it's not that hard for me to cook and prepare things because I know I will eat. You know, and then I eat at, at, at um, two and I try not to eat anything too huge because I, if I eat a really heavy meal, then I'm not hungry at six to eat again. And so I eat at two and then my body has four hours to digest the food, which is basically, you know, decent if I didn't overdo it and overeat for my first meal. So I eat kind of like more like breakfast foods for my first meal or, or a breakfast weight kind of food, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, and then at six o'clock, I'll eat my last meal and I am good. <laughs> you know, I am good. I'm completely satiated all afternoon. And when I go to bed, I'm fine. I've given my body enough time to work on the food. And so that's been life changing for me with this intermittent fasting. So I no longer feel like it's a burden. One thing I do do is I allow myself to abandon it depending on what's going on in my life. Like say my husband says he wants to go out for a breakfast date. We do that a lot because it's easier sometimes to, to do that on the weekend or even during the week if it's early enough. I, I just don't do it that day. Uh, I just don't practice intermittent fasting that day. Or if we're on vacation, or you know, if there's a special event that's later at night that I'm gonna be eating, I just don't do it. And since I live this way, since this is my life lifestyle, uh, since 90% of the time I'm eating this way, I rarely have any adverse effects uh, when I come off of it. And so I just wanted to let you guys know because 
I chose the 16-8 window thinking that that would be the least restrictive and that that would be the easiest for me to maintain. But in actuality, I noticed my pattern of eating was such that I was eating two, two meals within four hours anyway. And so sometimes you have to think about what you are naturally prone to doing. And I've never been much of a snacker, which is why I really struggled with every pregnancy when I had to eat more. And I ex experienced even more morning sickness than maybe if I could have gotten myself to eat more. And so that's all I have for you today. Uh, leave your questions for me down below, but I would encourage you to check out his videos because I just found them to be really helpful. I still like Dr. Berg. <laughs> I will still watch me some Dr. Berg. He's still a good um, reference. But some of the things that Fledge Fitness talks about how you're sabotaging uh, your, your goals with intermittent fasting and what your mindset should be like are a little bit different from what, what I've heard elsewhere. So I really enjoy his videos. And I think that's all he talks about on his channel. And so go check it out and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be blessed.